This is gonna be a powerful time of corporate prayer. Uh, we have a whole prayer ministry team that is fired up, ready to go to start praying into uh, Ukraine and Russia and the bride of Christ. And so you guys, this is this gonna be good. Something's about to shift. So I wanna welcome up our elder, Jane Seaton, to go ahead and begin to lead us into this time of powerful prayer. Thank you, Faith. Oh my gosh, this is the greatest day that Lord has set for us to pray as a corporate group together. Aren't we blessed? We are blessed with the freedom in this country to be able to gather and pray and what a privilege it is. Oh Lord, thank you so much. And um, today we have a very special um, player of, I don't know what we call it. she's not a guest, she's a member, but Lydia's gonna play for us. She also has, um, it's her, it's her prayer that she's putting out for us this morning. It's such a blessing to have her. And today is a different day for us because we're, Pastor Darren asked us to come together and pray and as a, as a group. So that's what we're going to do today. And we're praying for the Russian and Ukraine region where he is right now. And he's going to send some, some, some specific prayer requests in. And we'll pray for those too. Um, and we've asked several of our leaders to come up and pray. And they've been given a specific topic to pray for this morning. So as we, um, as they pray, pray, listen and, and pray with them. And however that comes to you, if you're, if you're standing up, if you're on your knees, however, whatever way that, that you're moved by those prayers, get involved in your seats and let's pray together. Um, and everybody that's coming up, can you introduce yourselves to, I didn't ask you to do that earlier, but if you could. So God gives us an assignment to pray because we have, he has, it's, it's his intention to fulfill those prayers. So let's pray together, church. And Lydia, as, um, as our special, she's played um, professionally in Ukraine for several years, and now she's offering up her, her prayer after um, Patty and Haley. Thank you, Lydia. You can pray in the background. Thank you. Hey everyone, Ooh, that was loud, okay. So I just, uh, I, my name's Patty Richardson, I'm one of the uh, pastors here and elders, and uh, I just wanted to sort of set the stage almost of what, uh, how that we can come together and we can um, pray over the Ukraine, over Russia, and for that region. Um, the Lord, as I was as we were worshiping, he, he gave me this verse that says in uh, Ephesians 3.10, it says, His purpose was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. And I just, I really felt uh, uh, that that's what the Lord is saying to us is that we are coming up into that place. We are seated with him in that heavenly place. And we are making known unto the principalities and powers, even over that region, what the manifold wisdom of God is. And so that's what I really feel today as we all come, as different people come and begin to share, that we are making known. And I saw, I, I, I really was really touched as we were worshiping. I saw us just hovering over, it, over uh, the Ukraine and over uh, Russia. And it was, uh, I think it was Justin Abraham said a, while, a few years ago, he said, if you don't love anything, if you, sorry, to have um, authority over something, you must love it. And so as we're coming up, we literally are put, wrapping our arms around these nations in love. And just because love overcomes and light overcomes darkness in that. So one of the, I'll just share one last little thing that, um, the Lord has just, he sort of has been speaking to me about coming up into the council of heaven. And in uh, Jeremiah 23, 18, it says, For who among them has stood in the council of the Lord to see and hear his words? Or who has paid attention to his word and listened? And of course, I get into the Hebrew on this, but it's when it says that he who stood, this is the sowed of heaven. This is the sowed of God. It's a council room. 
It's an assembly, a circle of friends. It's the intimacy with God that as we come up and we stand in that place and it says that we would see and that word is raha and it means like in Psalm 23 where it says the Lord is my shepherd. It means he causes us to see. So as we come up and as you're praying, to, as, as different people are praying today, please do this. Come up and see and begin to pray in the spirit with them. Pray in agreement with them. Come into agreement. It says when we're all in unity, we're going to just, there's power there. And so then it says, and to hear his word. And this word is the Hebrew word Shema. And it's where Solomon prayed when he, when he was, um, came into power as king. And he said, Lord, how will I rule this great nation? And the Lord, he asked the Lord for Shema. And Shema means that he not only wanted to hear God, but that he wanted to know the Father's heart. He wanted to know what his intent was. He wanted to know, God, why do you do things the way you do things? And so I feel like today as we come into agreement that this is what we're doing. We're asking the Father, Lord, what's your heart over this nations, these nations? What is your heart over this place? And we know we do not battle flesh and blood. We battle principalities and powers, but it's the church arising and declaring the manifold wisdom of God over that region that light will overcome darkness and that we will see great things happen there and we will see the light, the light of Christ come and sh shine forth in those people. So I'm just going to pray and then I will let Haley come. So Father, we thank you, Lord. Yes, God, that you've called us to come into your council room, Lord. You've called us into that place, Father, where we would see, we would hear, we would know what your heart is, God. And that, God, that our hearts would be so in tune with heaven, Father, that we would know, Lord, what to declare into that atmosphere, into that region, Lord, over your people, God, who you love so dearly. So we bless them, God. We bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Patty. Yeah. Yeah, let's pray. Uh, this morning, I just was reminded uh, that God always makes himself known in times of need. That he always, if you look in the Bible, every place, you always see him showing up, that he always shows up. That I just want to remind you that Jesus always shows up that he always shows up, that Jesus always shows up. He always showed up. He came to earth to, to heal us, to come and to be with us. Um, and so I just feel that he is a, a very present help in time of need. And so, Jesus, we thank you that you are a very present help in Ukraine. Jesus, that you are a very present help in Russia. Jesus, that you are a very present help in America, even to us. Jesus, that you are a very present help in this time of need. Yeshua, we, we praise you. We thank you. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you that you are present, that you are Emmanuel. You have not left your bride. You have not left your children. You don't leave your kids, Abba. You don't walk away in times of need, Lord, but that you are right now. Miracles are happening. Miracles are breaking out in Ukraine. Miracles are breaking out in Russia. Jesus, that you are making yourself manifest to those who are your bride. Jesus, to those who don't know you yet, that you're showing up. Lord, we praise you. We thank you. Jesus, we thank you. I, I felt this morning that he said, He's rising over his church with healing in his wings. He said, I'm rising over them with healing in my wings. And that comes out of Malachi 4, 2. I'll just read it. But unto you, yeah, we just say this over you, Ukraine. Uh, but unto you who re revere and worshipfully fear my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and his beams, and you shall go forth and gamble like like calves <laughs> released from the stall leaping for joy and so lord we we release your presence and your joy over ukraine wild 
joy in the wild presence of you, Jesus, that you are releasing your captives. Jesus, that you came to set the captives free. And so, Lord, we thank you that even now, that in the most intense moments, in the most intense pain, Jesus, that you're releasing your children. Yeah, so right now, if you want to, with me, just imagine a Ukrainian person in front of you. Just in your mind, if you want to imagine a Ukrainian or a Russian person, just, and I want you to begin to ask the Lord, Father, what is your heart for this person? What is your heart, God, for this person? Jesus, and, and we know that it is your will to heal them that you're arising with healing in your wings, that you don't leave this person, Jesus. We thank you. Yeah, go ahead and pray in the spirit and ask the Lord to reveal his heart. Jesus, reveal your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just hear him say, it is my heart that they see me. It is my heart that they see me. Jesus, we pray that they would see you. Jesus, we pray that Ukraine and that Russia would open up their eyes. God, open up their eyes that they would see you. Jesus, that they would see you. Jesus, that they would see you, that they would hear you. Lord, we thank you that you're making yourself manifest to the one, Lord, and to the many. Jesus, the nations are your inheritance. And oh, how you care for your inheritance. You don't leave your inheritance, Lord, that you care for your inheritance. You care for your children. Jesus, I thank you that you're close to these people. You're close to these people. Yeah, we just say to you, Ukraine, that, that Jesus has not abandoned you, that God has not abandoned you, but that he is close to you. Ukraine, that he is close to you. He is close to you, and he's coming with healing. He's coming with healing. Yeshua is coming with healing. He's coming with healing. He's coming to heal you. He's coming to come close to you. He's coming to come close to you. So Ukraine, open up your eyes. Open up your ears that you would hear and see the Father in the way that he loves you. We bless you, Ukraine. We bless you, Ukraine. We bless you, Russia. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So... Whoever's next is coming. Oh, yeah, Lydia. Yeah, so this is Lydia. She's amazing, and this is her prayer. Um, and so we bless you, Lydia. Thank you for playing. Yeah.
So hi, everyone. <laughs> My name is Raya. I am Ukrainian, actually. So I'll pray for people of Ukraine. Father, we bring people of Ukraine, my people, God, before your throne. And I ask you, Lord, that you hover over Ukraine with your shalom, shalom from heaven, God. I ask that you would visit your people, those that don't know you and those that know you, Jesus, that you would touch their hearts, Lord, that you would heal the nation of Ukraine, Lord, Lord, there's so many broken hearts. Families lost their loved ones. They're in grief, in pain, God. And I ask that you would bring your healing, healing of the nation, healing of people, healing of hearts, healing of their bodies, Lord. I ask you in Jesus' name, visit your people. I know you love Ukrainian people and you love Russian people and I ask unity. Unity because we're one nation, we're Slavic nation, God. We were never separated, we we're never divided. Lord, that's the enemy behind it. And I ask that you would bring judgment upon the enemy. Judgment upon the enemy that divided the nation, God. That dividing the two nations, which is one, Lord, bring your peace, God, your unity and healing. Lord, and I speak to the bones, you, Ukrainian people, the bones, the dry bones. I speak life, life in Jesus' name. Breathe your, your breath of life up over the people, God, and raise this army. And I believe this is the harvest time for the army of Ukrainian people, God, in that nation. Raise them up into the kingdom, the harvest into the kingdom, Lord. I thank you, God, that you're healing your Ukrainian people. There is, uh, in Revelation, it speaks of the tree of life. And the, the leaves of the tree is for the healing of the nation. And I ask that you apply those leaves over Ukraine for the healing of Ukraine, Lord. Heal the nation, God. Bring forth your restoration. Restore the ruins, God. Restore the people, God. Restore everything that's been destroyed by the enemy. And I ask that you would pay, the enemy pays back seven folds for every wicked thing that he stole from Ukrainian people. Everything that he destroyed, I ask for seven folds. Father, you are as a fair judge and you, you, you are looking at Ukraine. She's your darling. She's your loved one. And I ask that you would pay, the enemy would pay back seven folds that the blessing come for, to ukraine and the the ukraine would prosper prosper in your kingdom god souls for the kingdom of god thank you father that you hear our prayer and you heal our land thank you lord glory to you jesus christ amen In any situation, you don't have to lose sense of humor. <laughs> I will tell you how I become Russian. It's happened conservatively 47 years ago because for previous 25 years, I used to be Jewish. And then I immigrated to the United States and my relatives uh, invite me to Temple de Gorse Sinai. It's a synagogue in downtown Seattle on Capitol Hill. I remember my cousin used to be a president of that synagogue. And one nice gentleman started conversation with me. And I used to spoke uh, conservatively for five, six words in English. Now I'm capable to speak 15. He started asking me questions and he said, who are you? What is your nationality? And I said, well, I'm Jewish. 
He said, no, 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 no. I'm not asking about your religion. I did not have any. <laughs> and here, at that particular moment, I understand, wow, I'm a Russian. So I immigrated from Soviet Union because I am Jewish, and I came to United States to become a Russian. And I, <laughs> it is funny, it is funny, yeah. And I can thank uh, uh, President Richard Nixon because he actually was a great president in comparison to lots of different presidents. Uh, he came to Moscow in 1972, I believe, and he made a deal with uh, Brezhnev. And uh, I was not particularly uh, familiar with the deal, but after that, uh, Jewish people become uh, kind of... Uh, part of the trade and was able to immigrate, actually become refugees from Soviet Union. And that's why four and a half million Jews left Soviet Union. And that's become, and Soviet Union actually become a third world country. And that's why Russian army practically does not exist. It, Russia, it's a, it's a big gas station. They're, they're, not, they're not a huge, uh, powerful country. It's all myth. And uh, you was able to observe that in the last almost months. So Ukraine going to be absolutely glorious. War going to be ended soon. And Ukraine going to win because victory on the Ukraine side by one simple reason. Both of those countries being tremendously corrupted. But because of the circumstances, uh, Ukraine fought for their freedom. And people who experience socialism, people who experience life in Soviet Union and life in social camp countries never ever going to come back to what they experienced. So that's why Ukraine is so gloriously capable to win over Russia. They never going to come back to what it was before. Because Russia unfortunately going back to 1975 they're going to have uh, how they call it. Um, they're going to be closed country. They're going to be completely destroyed. And they're going to be uh, iron, uh, iron curtain. They're going to be covered by iron curtain. And people of Russia are going to struggle for a long period of time. And I feel tremendously sorry for them because they've been exposed to freedom, but they was not able to hold it because government of Russia is still absolutely horrible. It's no democracy for many years. Uh, in different conversations, people was asking me questions with suggestions that Russia have a kind of democracy. And I was trying to explain to them that is wrong. It's not true. They do not have democracy. It's the same government, even worse. And we're capable to observe what's happened there. And I have no idea what's going to happen there, but hopefully with God's help, only with God's help, it's a possibility that something will happen in this country. Not immediately. It will take a long, long, long time. But eventually, eventually, country will be changed for good. First of all, they have to change their church. Russian Orthodox Church. It's not a church. So God will have to be there first. And God is there. 
with Pentecostal church, with Baptist church. I don't know what else they have. But eventually they will come back to normal country. It will happen. But Ukraine going to become magnificent, beautiful country in the near future. It will be wonderful, free country. They have a great president, and he's a Jewish guy. And he's a smart guy, and he's a true hero. And it will be very bright, bright, bright future for this country. They're not going to be corrupted there like they used to be, because freedom they got cost them lots of blood. And I pray for them. I pray for their brightest future and their wonderful, wonderful, wonderful country. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we need you in this hour. We need you in this hour, Holy Spirit. Oh, we need you. We need you. Yes, yeah, so I am going to spend this moment here to pray over the media, which is pretty pivotal in this time, as the media is shaping so much of the narrative and, and the story and the truth of what's happening in our world right now. And so during Seattle's Alive, we had a speaker come up, and she was sharing how every mainstream media company is really owned by eight companies overall worldwide. And so there is an overarching presence of influence, but, but they do not have the authority. And so, yeah, we stand here today with authority in Christ, speaking to every principality, stronghold, and power that's trying to speak and manipulate through the mainstream media. And we say, be cast down in the name of Jesus. We cut every puppet string, every puppet string from influential puppeteers, and we say, be removed in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We declare the victory of Christ as the narrative in this world, the victory of Christ for every shadow that's being cast by a false narrative, by a manipulative picture, we just say, be revealed in the light of Christ. Do we speak into every network, every satellite stream, every broadcast, and we just say, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let light expose what's happening in the darkness. Let light expose every hidden practice. Let light expose every hidden narrative. Father, would you just reveal, would you reveal, would you reveal in this hour the person of truth, King Jesus, the person of truth, would that fill the narratives of the media? Would the media be wrecked by your love, Lord? Would there be a great revival in the media, in the worldwide media, that they can't not present Zion narratives, narratives from heaven, that you would lead every Every single story being told would come back to the one which began everything. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We just declare the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus over every news corporation, over Fox, over CNN, over MSNBC. We declare the blood of Jesus. We declare the radical, transformative power of the love of Christ, the blood of Jesus, the victory of Christ, which stands strong and which stands victorious victorious. And I feel like in this hour, we are, it's just so important for Holy Spirit to be our filter, for Holy Spirit to be our filter. Father, we just submit to you. Holy Spirit, we submit our minds to you. I even invite you to put your hand on your head right now. Holy Spirit, we submit our minds to you, that you would be our filter of truth. Truth comes from you. It comes from you, not from what's being said on a screen. But Holy Spirit, would you teach us? Would you guide us? Would you filter us in this moment, in this hour? We need you. We need you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Would every principality behind the mainstream media be, come under the feet of Christ, under the bronze feet of Jesus, come under the King? We just declare the authority of Christ over every principality trying to move in the shadows through the mainstream media. 
And yeah, Father, I just see an eruption of your glory and your glory being displayed in the media, your glory being displayed on, on screens, on TV, that the events would happen, that your great revealing, your great unveiling would just take over, would take over everything being displayed on the screen. We trust you, Lord. We trust you. And we need you. We need you. Would you burn in us? Would you burn us? We release the fire of your love to this world. Not just this region, but to the world. Touched by the fire of your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We need you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hello Church, this is a special moment. I just want to thank uh, SRC devoting this time to act in accordance to the will of God for this hour. Uh, I want to take our attention to the refugees, to the people that are hurt and wounded, people of Ukraine and equally people of Russia. The suffering that people of Russia have gone through is beyond imagination. Loss of life, loss of hope. There is a, uh, a, a story, it's not a story, it's an occurrence. Jesus himself went through this experience. When Magi visited Jesus, and then Herod the king uh, wanted to also find out where Jesus was. He said, I'm going to worship, but actually he was going to seek his life. I want to read this, and there are some points. Because the, when we pray, whether we are praying in uh, unity, praying in um, prayer of consecration, the, we have to put the laser right into where it should be. When somebody is diagnosed with kidney stone, the laser the doctor is going to is going to point it to the stone. And we're going to, from this exactly very clear, the situation of Ukraine, the situation of Russia is exactly what Jesus went through. I'm going to read a very short uh, passage, and then uh, I pray that God is not just we pray here, couple minutes and ends here. No, I, I'm praying that it's... The, the light and the necessity, the fire of necessity, it will be kindled in our hearts. That not only just from this moment, today, and days to come. And we put our hope on Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He has given his life for Ukrainian, for Russian, for Middle Eastern, for you, people of United States. Amen. Amen. We read in Matthew um, 2, verse 13. He said, Now when they had departed, Magi, the good kings, with the good heart, they brought gifts for Jesus. And those gifts were used when Jesus went on the, on the refugee mission into, into um, Egypt. And they became a, a provision for him to, for the period that he was in. He said, um, Departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. In the dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you a word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him, and his mother by night, and by night departed for the Egypt. I, I just imagine with these people, we see that probably we never get the feel how these people are going to rule. The children that they have lost their hope, the family that they, 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 uh, uh, broken and destroyed, all the hope, all the possession, the life savings, they live in, and, and uh, Joseph wakes up in the morning and says, Mary, pack. Just think what she gone through with the child that was born. Now they're going to go on this mission and they're going to come back. But also the agony, the situation that, that Ukrainian are in, the, the, the Russian are in. We read in, uh, read in verse 18, it says, The voice was heard in Rama, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted. 
This is exactly the mothers are going through. This is exactly the people are going through. And we want to pray for this, that not only that God meet them. God, extend your powerful hand. God, we want to be not, we want to be wise. And we want to pray exactly, Father, we laser point of our prayer to the stony heart of this wicked, wicked king and leaders, Father. And the corruption that Father had destroyed this land. Father, we ask, just like Nehemiah and Daniel, we prayed, Father, forgive us. Forgive our sins. We have sinned against you, Father. I stand with my Ukrainian brothers and sisters. I stand with my, Ukra my Russian sister and brother. Father, forgive our fathers. We sin against you, Father. And Father, we come as according to your word, your promise. We're going to return from the bad things, from the corruption, Father. And we're going to call on your name and your promises that you're going to hear us, Father, and you're going to heal the lands. Heal Russia. Heal Ukraine. Heal all those countries, Father. Father, just capture the heart of those people, those wicked uh, leaders, Father, and all those wicked outside influencers. I uh, speak life over Ukraine and Russia. I speak that they become glorious states for God. And instead of having refugees going out, they're going to send missionaries out. Missionaries to the Middle East. Missionaries to Asia. Middle East to Europe. The missionaries to America. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, I get the opportunity to share uh, or pray for the protection of the team that's there. Just read you a quick update um, uh, from Pastor Darren. He said, we ministered at a church in Ukraine today. So this was our night last night. He said, most of the people have fled in the church. He was a pretty sober service. He said, I prophesied, Charlie went after miracles. He said, we just got done interviewing refugees and ministering to them. Uh, before he left, he told us that there was a, an American newspaper, I won't say the name, that they were reaching out to them and said, hey, we want to get some, some, if you could interview some people, and we want to get some firsthand stories because we don't even really trust our own reporters, you know. And so they're, they're trying to do what they can to bring back an, an honest report uh, to this, um, this news uh, media. And um, he said, we just got through ministering to them. He said, tragic stories of losing their homes to bombs. He said, one man wept as he described listening to his neighbor scream for help for over an hour after a bomb blast, and then he passed away. He said, the Lord really ministered to him. And uh, he said, we're driving back to the border now. No missile, no missile sirens today. The pastor said they had sirens sounding most of the night. So they're actually heading back into Ukraine today. Uh, from Romania. Half the team is going to stay in Romania in the uh, refugee camps and minister there. And Darren and Charlie and Giles, three of them, will go back into Ukraine today to focus on uh, ministering in refugee camps in Ukraine. And I just had this scripture I want to read out of Acts chapter 4. It's the prayer of the apostles and say, and now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. So, Father, I pray for this team today, Lord. I pray that you would protect them, that you would go before them, that you would keep angels around them, keep them safe, Lord God, from any, any injury or harm or bomb or blast or, or anything that could possibly happen to them, Lord God. But, Father, I pray that as they go, that you would stretch forth your mighty hand, Lord God, that they would, as they encounter these people in these refugee camps, Lord God, and they all have stories, Lord God, that are heartbreaking. But, Jesus, you came 
to heal the broken heart of the Lord. It's through your service as they go and minister to these people, Lord God, that they are able to that, 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 that be that conduit of healing to those broken hearts, Lord. So, Father, I pray you use this team in a mighty way, Lord God, to minister to the people, the refugees of Ukraine, Father God. I pray that you would just uh, pour out your spirit at every place, into every heart that they encounter, Lord God, that you would truly use them in a mighty way. They would come back with stories and testimonies testimonies of the power of God and the miracles that, that took place in that nation, Lord. So, Father, we just pray again. Watch over them, Lord God. Go with them. Go before them. Let your glory be surrounding them, Lord God. Let your angels clear their paths and keep them protected and safe everywhere they go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Wow. I'm Grant Bruno, uh, one of the elders and pastors. Uh, thank you, Jane, for leading this. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Patty, for orchestrating it, tweaking it. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Wait, I, I, just, I just think we need to pray in tongues for a second. Kure pa ka pa pa. Shikita pa 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 ra pa ka ta. Will all those uh, stand who are from the Ukraine or from Russia who have maybe family members there that uh, we, we want to honor you. We want to, to uh, yeah, there's probably more, any, any more. Just stand if you have even family from the Ukraine, uh, family in Russia, that's where you were from, relatives there. Can we just uh, circle around these, these loved ones and, and pray over them? I just feel a little, a different type of prayer during this service. Jesus. These people who are standing in, in proxy. These, these loved ones who are standing in proxy, who have, whose hearts are broken because they know what's going on. They, they know what the average loving person in Russia and Ukraine are suffering through right now. The famine that's beginning in Russia. The, the horrible horrible atrocities in Ukraine from, from uh, the military. We come to you, Lord, and we say, Jesus, you are the verdict. You are the verdict. You said it is finished. You are the verdict over Russia in Ukraine. You are the verdict. You are the verdict. We just declare that you, you encounter the government. You encounter leaders in the government. Or, or Lord, we pray, as Michael was, was alluding to, that they be removed in Jesus' name. That righteousness rules in these lands. Jesus, you are the verdict and what your sacrifice has done for, for these two countries. <laughs> we just declare over, these, over the, the blessings because you saw the joy set before you for Ukraine, for Russia. Your sacrifice wasn't in vain. So we declare it. We declare blessing over Russia. We declare blessing over the Ukraine, and we again just say, thank you, Jesus, that you are our wonderful verdict there. <laughs> you nailed it down. You said it's finished. It's done. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Grant. Uh, my name is Phil Seaton. I'm an elder. I'm also Jane's husband. Um, I just want to talk about how this house has really been a vessel. Um, Jane and I were blessed with the opportunity to remodel the sanctuary and the uh, front area here with the cafe. And we partnered with a, um, a subcontractor, and he was Russian who fled Russia to the Ukraine. And so we were um, ripping up the floor that you're all sitting on now and having lunch over a period of days as we did this work. And I noticed all the workers kept focusing on one gentleman to pray. And so afterwards I asked through interpreters, because he couldn't speak English, is who was this man? And he was a pastor from the Ukraine. And um, I'd, I'd seen him in here for several days on his hands and knees, ripping up this floor and putting down underlayment and stuff. And I asked, you know, why, why was he here helping? And really what he was doing was earning money so he could go on his own mission. And he was going to go to Mexico and help the poor in Mexico. And then as I got to talk to the different individuals that were helping, um, come to find out that all of them from this one church was here helping so they could fund their own mission trips to, their, to these different countries. Most of them were at, actually heading down to Mexico. So I, I just want to pray for the business and I want to pray for uh, how the businesses become vessels and how we co-create um, moving forward with the refugees coming from uh, Ukraine and Russia. So Lord, we pray for the flow of money new opportunity to light the paths bless the businesses of every country that has opened their arms to the people fleeing this region we decree favor over the businesses and people working in the businesses bless the families who are in need of income in russia and in the in the ukraine you are the provider lord open the gates of opportunities and destinies for these families as they stepped into new areas of opportunity Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My name is Sonora. <laughs> um, so as we were listening to Lydia's prayer, I was actually taken into a vision um, in the first service, and then the Lord took me into the vision again. Um, in the third ser uh, in the in the service and so I just want you to go with me into the vision it's this vision this place of a war zone and as you can imagine it's a place uh, that is somber it's a place that is dark there's death there's chaos there's bombs there's missiles there's wailing there's crying and at the at the peak of this place of, of the war going on here comes the bride <laughs> hey Koraba Shata. Here comes the bride. She, and as she steps onto the scene, the earth sh cracks under her feet because of her power. And the glory of the Lord is shining upon her, and she's in this majestic gown. And it's not the gown, it's not the wedding gown, but it is the garment of the governmental authority of the bride. And as she goes forth on this battlefield, she takes out her sword and it is the sword of the spirit and she begins to slaughter every principality everything that would exalt itself above God she is the bride she is coming in all power she is coming in all authority she is coming with no fear she is coming with boldness to declare the good works of the Lord and so father right now in the name of Jesus we come before your throne of mercy and grace we come as the bride we come in your power we come in your authority authority, Lord God. We come in the dominion that you have given us, Lord God, to push back the darkness. We speak to the darkness right now in the name of Jesus, and we command you to cease in Jesus' name. We come with the bloodstained banner of Jesus, and we say, Satan, the Lord God rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We come as the bride. We stand, Father, in the name of Jesus on the rock, the chief cornerstone, who is Jesus the Christ, in the name
name of Jesus, Lord God, we are the light and the darkness shall not overcome it. We declare, oh God, as a body of believers, as the bride, that we are ready. We declare, Lord God, that we are a prepared people, Lord God, created to make your name excellent, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you today, in the name of Jesus, that we will stand and we will stand therefore to see the salvation of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to pray for a revival in the nation, but I want to read Psalm 85 to you first because this is a psalm of uh, the sons of Korah wrote after they had been disciplined by the Lord. And Ukraine is coming out of a, uh, a real rough time. I, I don't know if it's the discipline of the Lord or anything like that, but I know it's been war and, and war is hell. And, and so uh, these people are coming out of that place. And this is a psalm written after they had, they had been through the, the discipline of the Lord. Lord, your love has poured out so many amazing blessings on our land. You've restored Jacob's destiny from captivity. You've forgotten our many sins and covered every one of them in your love. So now it's obvious that your blazing anger has ended and the furious fire of wrath has been extinguished by your mercy. So bring us back to loving you, God, our Savior. Restore our hearts so that we'll never again feel your anger rise against us. Will you forever hold a grudge or will your anger endure for all time? Revive us again, O oh God. I know you will give us a fresh start. Lord, <clears throat> then all your people will taste your joy and gladness. Pour out even more of your love on us. Reveal more of your kindness and restore us back to you. Now I'll listen carefully for your voice and wait to hear whatever you say. Let me hear your promise of peace, the message every one of your godly lovers longs to hear. Don't let us in our ignorance turn back from following you, for I know your power and presence shines on all your devoted lovers. Your glory always hovers over all who bow low before you. Your mercy and your truth have married each other. Your righteousness and peace have kissed. Flowers of your faithfulness are blooming on the earth. Righteousness shines down from the sky. Yes, the Lord keeps raining down blessing after blessing, and prosperity will drench the land with a bountiful harvest. For deliverance goes before him, preparing a path for his steps. Would you stand as I pray for revival in these two nations? Oh, God. Father, we bless you tonight, this morning, Lord. We know that you are the God of the universe. And Lord, when you revive people, it means they wake up. That means they come alive. It means they entangle with you. It means they listen to your heart. Lord, that they keep company with you. They keep company with the saints and the hosts of the Most High God. We keep company with them today, Lord. And Father, we speak revival into these nations. We speak revival right into the very ground of Russia and Ukraine. We speak revival into their churches in the name of the Most High God. That, Lord, you would awaken their churches. That revival would just burst forth like the morning sun. That, Lord, you would encourage their pastors and their leaders that you would revive them in their rooms at night, Lord. You would take them into visions and into dreams. That, Lord, a whole new revival would sweep across the lands. Lord, the church would rise up in such power. Lord, you would revive their businesses. Revival is so contagious, Lord, that you would revive their government with godly men and women. You would raise up the righteous in these two nations, Lord. And, Father, they would call upon the Lord our God that, Lord, there would be such a mighty revival in this nation that millions would come to Jesus. And that, Lord, these nations, these two nations would turn and they would be the purveyors of revival all over the world, Lord. That you would send them, as Michael prayed this morning, as revivalists into the nations. Lord, make everything, even the ground 
of the earth revive itself, O oh God. Let the spring rains come and bring the plants. Bring life back to every area. Bring their homes back, Lord. Bring their businesses back, Lord. Bring the cities back, Lord. Bring everything back to life in Ukraine and in Russia, Lord. Yeah. Father, have your way today. Have your way today. And Lord, send our people in. Send our pastors into Ukraine with revival fire in their hearts, Lord. That, Father, they would spearhead revival in that nation. That, Lord, people would hear things they never heard from God before. Because you sent people in with a fresh word of the Lord. With a fresh fire of his revival, Lord. Father, everywhere they go, let them leave the blessing of revival. In Jesus' name we pray today. Amen. 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 Wow. Uh, this kind of brings our service to a close here. But what I just wanted to say is if anyone's here and you've never given your life to Christ, what a great day to do it. This is the best day of your life the best day of my life when I gave my life to Christ. So if you haven't given your life to Christ, please do so today. You can come up to the altar afterwards. Anyone who needs prayer, if you need revival in your marriage, if you need revival in your heart, if you want, to, you want revival in your city, come up. We'll agree with you today for revival. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And keep Ukraine in, in your prayers and Russia in your prayers. God's going to do something awesome there. He's going to blow our mind. Trust me. Trust me. Amen. Thank you, everyone who prayed today. You guys did awesome. I could feel the fire while you were praying. And also, and also, tonight we have another prayer meeting. We're going to have a